Who's here for the Lego talk in the audience? No hands. There will be plenty of Lego, and there's a coincidence there's a Lego talk in the next room. So, but we're not from Lego, but we like Lego, so it's everywhere in the talk. All right, so um, before we start, a short introduction. Who is who here on stage? So, hey, I'm MJ. I work at Cast AI. We do cost optimization, and I'm interested in control planes. This is why I'm here. Sebastian, one of the founders of Kubernetes, and yeah, all we do is all around control planes. Yeah, more or less the same for me, Stefan. I'm at Upbound doing control planes. You know myself probably from CRDs. I was very involved there. So if you use them, that's probably partly my, co my code. So our talk today is why Kubernetes is inappropriate for platforms. So this is, uh, of course, a big claim. And how to make it better. So this talk is about ideas. It's not about setting a project or a product or anything like that. So it's more, more about um, not just accepting Cube, but thinking about how we would have to change Cube to get something better for platforms. That's our motivation today. And we were thinking, OK, the last days were all about AI and ML. So let's build an AI and ML platform here. Um, and keep in mind, we like Cube, but we also want to show you what potentially could be improved or what we dislike. So let's start with this experiment. So if you want to build a platform, uh, the first thing what we need is we need to provide our developers some kind of possibilities to create objects. So we need some kind of objects. We have this in Kubernetes. We have CRDs. We can create like an object uh, called model, and different teams can create it, different users can create it. So it's there, perfect. The next thing, as we want to provide our platform to different teams, we need to have some separation. We have this also in Kubernetes called namespaces. So we can give each team its own namespace. They can deploy this object, and it's completely separated. We can also separate it by our bug. So also this we have in Kubernetes. And of course, what we want to have is a uniform API. So potentially, we need even more objects. And it should every time follow similar principles. And Kubernetes gives this uh, to us. And if in the future, we want to add another AI service, or we want to add a database service, it should not be a complete different way how to consume this, how to operate with the service. So this part we have, perfect. Let's go further. The next step is we now have this object. What to do with it? In Kubernetes, we have this reconciler pattern, like the control loop um, to interact with it. And then we build operators on top of this who do some actions, who either deploy stuff on Kubernetes, if you know cluster API, it can even, or cross-plane, it can even talk to other APIs. So there are tools for this, most popular controller runtime to build this, but there are many more, like, for example, Cube Builder, or Meta Controller, if you don't want to um, write so much code and want to make it more uh, simple. And also, like, if you want to really deep go into it, like client Go, and you don't only need to be using Go for it. There are many other ways. Uh, you can use Rust, Python, Java. So there's a big ecosystem of tooling to work with this. Cool. So multi-tenancy. So in Kubernetes, we all know that multi-tenancy is implemented in a namespaces. But there is a question mark at the end. Is this really a multi-tenancy? So when your tenants are split by namespaces, you are a developer, you're developing on that internal developer platform. You're interacting with a platform via clients, SDKs, and it's explicit. Your developers usually have access to one namespace or all of them. And the SDK has to be specifically typed. But that's not a challenge. You can work with that. Your teams can create a wrappers around that. The real challenge happens when you start interacting with CRDs within the clusters. So when, as soon as you install cluster-wide services like Cert Manager, Crossplay, and Argo CD, and you as a platform owner needs to upgrade those components. Now you have to synchronize with each and every development team to make sure they, they are OK with the upgrade, they are OK with the versions. If you want to introduce some clashing CRDs, you have to go out and basically get a consensus from your platform to do that. And in the end, this makes a platform owner a very unhappy person because usually these 
personas has to deal with those things. So. Yeah, short status check. So this looks okay-ish, like we, we live in that world, so. But there are cracks already visible in this model if you want to build platforms. But we know this pain. Several years we live to them and okay, we can continue like that. But um, if you continue, this, this picture here is actually not the picture of today, right? Um, people have more, more, more clusters. So single region, multi-tenancy via namespaces, we had that like seven years ago. Didn't look so, uh, different, single source of truth in one cluster. The real challenge today is that, right? Multi-region, multi-cloud, everybody wants to do that. And you need more isolation in namespaces. So there are, there are ways to get that, like more clusters essentially of some kind, and we talk about that in a second. So more clusters means a sprawl of clusters and this brings complexity. So you have to think about how to share data, like um, the volumes maybe just live in one cluster and you cannot talk between services via the Cube API. Um, Keeping config consistent needs tooling, and um, applying policy gets more complicated. So there are many, many complexities, and um, so we, we represent it here in, the, in this picture as bridges. So we have to con reconnect those clusters, right? There are connections, logical connections, maybe even network connections, but they are connected. They are, they are not living on their own. And to, to start with that, like you have to create the clusters, there is a, a giant ecosystem already to just create clusters. And you will have in use maybe one or two of those tools, maybe other tools. But you create more clusters, more tools um, are available. And basically, if you have more clusters, you have to tame them. So there's another class of tools to do everything I, I showed previously, config, compliance, Argo CD, so GitOps tools, Cosplane, um, help you with policies and with, with application deployment. Cluster federation helps you to a degree with, uh, with, with, with compute, so federating um, deployments across clusters. And there are cluster managers, like the Open Cluster Manager project, for example. And you see there's a, there's a big set of, um, yeah, of tools, and they are all very scoped. They have their use case, and yeah, you all know this, this cartoon there at the bottom. Um, isn't there something which can unify them? Of course, this is an immediate idea that engineers have. But those tools are not just technology. Um, the problem, the real problem for platforms is every tool dictates a view on personas. And the view on personas maybe doesn't match what you actually want to build. And maybe they have been developed like three, four, five years ago when platforms also were not a thing. So they were not built in a way that they are really compatible with platforms. So personas, um, basically people, um, they are the actual um, challenge in this area. And the usual personas, and we'll talk about them later on, platform owner, service provider, and user. So we focus on those three. And what makes it complex, Cube was built basically with one persona in mind, right? There was this ops person deploying application on a cluster. This admin basically can do everything. And those personas, they have very limited and partial responsibility. So you have to find a model for authorization, using Airbag maybe, or other tools, Caviano policy things. And you have to basically implement the responsibilities they should have, and not more because then it's a security problem. And it's getting even more interesting when you think about third parties. So you want to use a third party tool, like a service which is installed on that big setup. And this big setup is your setup. If you ask your neighbor how your platform looks like, the neighbor's platform, it will be completely different, right? Everybody is proud to have solved the platform problem in some way by a clever use of tools. But it's, it, it's, it's very diverse. And um, the tooling we have in the ecosystem, like a Helm chart, doesn't make sense in this world, right? It cannot talk about multi-cluster. It's, it's just not made for that. So one question you could have, what is actually a, a package, a service which is um, able to span clusters? How to install that? How does it know about your clusters? And you get those other bridges or those other streets there. So many, many um, ways to reconnect the cluster. But this, this territory between the clusters is basically undefined, right? If you go here to the, to the booth hall uh, above, um, every multi-cluster tool builds their own bridges. And there is no common language. So complexity explodes. The thing is hard to support. Like it, it can break down easily by just new requirements, for example, because you just found those tools which basically implement just the requirements at the point in time, but tomorrow there's a new requirement and those tools don't do it anymore because 
Yeah, it's hard. They're not integrated. They just do what, what you wanted at the time. And it's hard to integrate into them. Like installing something new and um, supporting the same personas is hard. And in general, I think it's, a, it's not a good experience. You can build it to a degree, like a platform which kind of works, but it's not a good experience for any of those roles. And the reality check again, Cube was not built for that. Like we are trying to build platforms via a technology was, which was built for containers. That was the purpose all the time. And platforms is something we came up like in the last year or last two years, and um, we try to, to, to make uh, yeah, use of Kubernetes for that. So, but remember, we like Cube. Like the ecosystem is, of course, very big. Lots of companies and projects around. So we want to keep that. But the real question is, so we want to keep the ecosystem, but if we built a, Cube, a Kubernetes, a Cube today for platforms, it wouldn't look like Kubernetes. It would be similar in certain degrees, but it wouldn't be Kubernetes, for sure. So, um, yeah, last summary about that. So we know where to go to. Like, we have a rough idea what a platform could do. We did something similar before, but this time ambitions are different. So we want to build something which can lift up an ecosystem to platforms. Personas change, obviously. And Kelsey once mentioned, Cube is not meant as an end game. It gives a pattern, like it builds a plat basically a platform for, for container workloads, but it's for container workloads. And the big question is, what is the next step? Like if we lift up or we leave the, the container orchestrations um, uh, area and we build platforms for other things. And yeah, coming back to Lego, we are on the left side, right? We have small building blocks built for single cluster environments and everybody can build a car or something. But again, if you ask uh, um, your neighbor for his car he built with the same tools, it will be very different, and they don't integrate. It's great for creativity. Everybody is proud about the car, but we have to get to the right side, like a grown-up approach, where basically we build towns, and towns are an environment where every component lives in, where I can have an off-the-shelf component which knows about this as a platform. There are clusters, there are APIs and everything. This is a, the vision, basically. And we should get back to a, a place where we can collaborate, like a, a common language talking about platforms, where you can build a service which just deploys onto this big platform worldwide, multi-region, multi-cloud, and so on. And one of the challenges, what we see, Stefan mentioned it already, nowadays we have much more personas in the game. So when we started with Kubernetes, typically it was a developer who was responsible for everything. So, but now we have at least three different kinds of people who are involved in this, but there could be even more. So it's starting from the platform owner. So the platform owner really holds the key for everything. Um, he connects everything together and he provides this generic platform what the users can consume. But the platform is nothing without services. So then we have the service provider. So these are dedicated teams who are really providing the services. In our case, it's the AI or ML team who's providing this as a service to the developers so, and who's also operating this. So all this complexity like how to upgrade, how do I maintain this, is done by the service provider because they are the experts of the tool. And then we have the users. They want to use this. They are developers or data scientists in the AI ML space or application owners who are building higher level services on top. Um, so definitely, if you're talking about platform, you at least have these three personas, but there could be even more. So let's look into more in detail. Let's look into more into the platform owner. So the platform owner, the main focus is really the enablement. So they give you a well-defined, flexible platform um, to make the consumption and to make to consume the services for the user as easy as possible. Also, they want to abstract the complexity. As a user, you don't want to deal with like how do I deploy this AI ML service on a cluster. Uh, you are potentially even not a Kubernetes expert. You want to consume the service. So the goal for them is like, for the platform owner is like, how can I provide this generic platform that the service provider then can use to build this higher level services on top of this. And another part is then also, it needs to be scale. Scale, horizontal, on different providers, potentially, on different regions, adding new services to it, adding new users to it, so that's not 
a platform for only AI. In our case, we want later to add databases or storage as a service to the platform. So the platform needs to build in a way that it's really scaling and that's um, working to add other services and that these other services can easily consume in a similar way. Especially without reinventing the wheel for each and each of the services. So it should be easy to add new services with similar patterns, similar ways, and not like that every service later has its own API, its own way to provision. So as a developer or as a user, you really want to have one way how to do this so that you can also build higher level tooling on top of this. Which makes it then to keep it really homogeneous so that you have one way and one way to consume it, one way to provide it, and as a user, you don't care if you're consuming our AI service or potentially later consuming a database service additionally. It should be easy to integrate into your stack, into your tool, tool stack, and you want to have this uh, simplicity. Similar, I mean, we are all here on the um, KubeCon, similar Kubernetes did for containers. So Kubernetes really enabled this whole ecosystem. Um, and I think similar we need also for the platform uh, we need this standard way that everyone can deploy and adding services to, to this. So we really need to build it for the user. Um, so they should not be forced from the platform team in any opinionated way. They should use the services. If you have multiple services, they should use whatever is best for them um, and not what we potentially from the platform team think because there the value comes. Um, it's primarily giving them the services, and if your services are good, they will consume it. They will use it. Um, if it's easy con to consume, um, easy, to, easy to upgrade, easy to adding new services, they will definitely start consuming it and um, potentially even getting into the role that they later add their application as service to the platform as well. So that other then can again use their services and you stack, stack it up service by service. Yeah, next one, service uh, provider. So imagine you are developers and you want to, to build some tooling. So imagine um, when I talk about tooling, I don't know, a policy engine or something like that. And in Kubernetes, you have, you know, controllers, obviously. You can run controllers in Kubernetes, but they are basically limited to the cluster scope, right? They cannot go outside. I mean, they can, but tooling like controller runtime is just not built for that. There's even not multi-cluster in controller runtime nowadays. So what we, we want, and this is, of course, is a vision, um, to have this, this rail track for basically the service provider behind the scenes of the users. So users are in those small um, plates there, the colored plates, and we are on the track now, and uh, we are building the service via controllers. So to do that, we need some, some system, and again, the example Kubernetes does it for cluster, where you can get the request from the users and build something in a consistent way, whether it's one region, multi-region. Basically, you need awareness of the APIs and the tooling you have for this platform use case. And if you, if, you, if you have that, you are efficient, right? And you can safely operate the, the, um, the service in the setup. So what we need is something like a set of tools which not only work for single region, but also for this bigger setup. And you, uh, you see those cranes there on the track, so those are the controllers. And you need a way to deploy them without even knowing that there are seven clusters in this region and 25 in that region. Today, there is just no way to make those aware, especially not with standard tools. Right? You cannot deploy a third manager um, globally. No way. There's no, no, no way to do that. And the, yeah, the vision is basically we need some, some, some system which can talk about those global services as a product, a product you build your own, a product you sell, or something you buy from some, some vendor. And it's, I mean, if, if you think about a vendor, you buy something from somewhere, somewhere else, like you have this consultancy you, you hire because they have this very useful turnkey solution for some, some use case and you want to deploy that, I mean, you have a big platform, there's lots of data inside, lots of secret data maybe even, and Kubernetes cannot protect that really. I mean, it's, it's pretty limited what Kubernetes itself can do, but the system must, of course, allow secure third-party services. And yeah, if you go into details here, zoom in a bit, what are the primitives? And we will not show them here, we'll see some of them in the demo later on. But um, the question, of course, is the CRDs we saw in the beginning. Are they actually the right thing for the setup, or do we need anything else? Of course, we can ship around CRDs, like we can synchronize them and uh, install tons of Helm charts. But is this, is this the right um, abstraction? And um, yeah, maybe not. And Airbag 
same question. If I'm a service provider, I only want to see what I have to see. Otherwise, there's a risk that I, I leak data or I um, some exploit in my application does something back for the platform. So I want to see only what I need, like the claims of users and nothing else. A any, anything I don't, I don't need from my service, I don't want to see. With Airbags, this is hard. All right. Sounds all very abstract. There's always compute, of course. Compute is central, obviously. In, I mean, in Kubernetes, it's this thing, like it's the center of the world. In a platform, there must be compute, but it's just another service. So think about APIs which provide compute. This can be a um, Kubernetes API or anything else. But maybe you have seen that like when the cloud movement uh, was starting, this term of utility computing was a thing. And basically, it's what Argo CD, Flux, or other tools like Crossplane um, what they are modeled around, right? They are running somewhere, but basically Argo CD or Flux or so, they can deploy stuff elsewhere. It's always somewhere else, on some compute service. And there are different ways, different um, kinds, flavors of compute services. I guess many will use vCluster for isolation reasons, for example. It's just an API to create a vCluster and um, get it into the system in a consistent way. It doesn't matter that if you run an application, you don't have to know it's a vCluster, right? It's a detail. It's something the application team could just do behind the scenes. You want compute, which is cube compatible. And of course, VMs and similar things also exist. Federation, there are many more, more variants. And the core idea here is cube is attached to the platform. So attached, we will see it very visually later on when MJ uh, shows the demo. Compute is not the center of what we are talking anymore about. So compute is a service on top of a platform, not the center of the world. Cool. So let's look a bit to the user journey. So we talked about two personas, but in the end, users are who will use the platform. So as a user, what I want, I want uh, spaces to do my job, to work, to interact with. And in this concept, we call them workspaces. They, are, they should be distributed. And as a user, I should decide where I want my workloads to run, where my jobs to be, either it's on-premise data center or in the cloud. It's a distributed, isolated, but at the same time, all logically collected. It's like, last thing I want to do is keep jumping different cube configs, different access modes. It should be seamless in my control. I should choose which APIs to consume and where. And you might argue that this picture is not the one which is abstracts the complexity, but as a user, this is what I want to see. Only things I interact with, there's few blue, bluish blocks which represents the attached compute. Single API endpoint, I can navigate from one workspace to another. So isolation at the same time, connectivity together. And for me, if I'm jumping from application to application, from region to region, from cloud to cloud, I should not care about implementation details under the hood. That's a platform's owners and service provider team's responsibilities. Yeah, and what we describe here, it's a vision. Uh, this is not Kube, right? Kube cannot do that. Just by adding more clusters to, to our platform, I, I will not get this user experience, this experience how to use uh, a platform, how to consume APIs, and so on. So it looks like we need new primitives, and primitives which are not about just containers, but in a way um, they should be for a world which are inherently multi-tenant, region, and cloud. Cube was never built for that. And again, the big goal is to regain um, yeah, a state where we speak the same language, where we can innovate together. And I mean, what we all like at Cube is the API. And we want to have this kind of uh, API. And so there is something there already. So we have KCP, Kubernetes-like control planes. It's now a CNCF sandbox project. It's really a framework to bootstrap Kubernetes-like SaaS or platforms um, to build this, to build higher level services on, on top of it. But there's even more work done also in upstream Kubernetes to make the API server more generic so that you have really generic control planes, which is not all the details you need for containers because for a platform, you potentially don't need containers. You won't need to have services, but in the real compute cluster, you later need containers again. And I want to underline the word framework. This is not a product, not a project. It's a project, but it's not something you, you install usually. It's, it's a framework to bootstrap experiences, to build an experience for a platform. So what MJ will show in a second is basically an example. It's an example platform 
experience built with KCP. KCP is a library, if you want, to do those things. And it doesn't have to be a platform. It can also be a product, like there are companies building um, Cube, Kubernetes-compatible products, which are not about containers, on that basis. And the core component that is shared, that's KCP. OK, so demo time. I know, thanks for sitting all our visionary talk. Let's see this in action. In this case, we have a platform deployed across two global locations globally. So we have two, two regions. One is named Root, and it's based in Europe because KubeCon in France, Europe. And we have a second region, which is Beta, named Beta, and it's in US. And I will, act, will be acting as all three personas in a demo, so I will try to represent it as best as I can. So let's see how it goes. So first persona, I'm as a platform owner. So service team came to me. They said, like, hey, we are ML team, AI team. We want to start providing model training API to your customers in your platform. It's like, sure, like, I can do that. So just to get showing, so I have two locations, root beta, single API represented here. And I show the current view of my current workspaces nested to Chisheve. These are platform system workspaces, nothing to do with ML AI. So, so it's, um, MJ, this is one KCP, right? And it's running already yeah. worldwide in two regions. It's a single instance. It has this spanned out across the locations. And I will show later on how, this, how the users will interact with it and choose where we want the workloads to run. So let's do, first thing I need to do is I need to bootstrap my ML Teams configuration into the cluster. That's your custom tool you want, right? Yes, I'm, it's a custom code. And nothing stops this to be self-service. So teams can come in and onboard themselves too. In this case, I want to have platform owner wants to have more control. So he says like, yes, OK, I'm going to onboard you. But this tool is basically aware of the clusters, right? Or the regions, so it can yes. have APIs for that. So let's show the different view what we have now. Do, 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 do. And I'm nervous typing. Yeah, in WS, of course, it's workspace. So, you mentioned yes. That. And I can see the new workspace appeared, ML for the ML team and sub workspace training. So I created this a playground for ML service team to go and provide the service. So how this looks like, if I go now inside, API export dash o here. No. So it bootstrapped an API. So it created this API as a service object. And it's called training. It's already bounded to both locations. This is enough to enable the platform, the service team, ML team, to start serving behind these APIs, like create their own services. Globally. So, so this is important, right? It's, uh, so they can provide controllers. Yes. And so, okay. They are just aware of the topology in, uh, yeah, in different so At this point, I'm shifting personas to be a more like a service provider team. So let's get some layers off. So I'm switching to config. And CD, just to show where I am, from the service side, I have this structure created for myself as a user. And my team runs everything in a Kubernetes controllers. We like Kubernetes controllers. So we're going to be serving those APIs using standard Kubernetes controller pattern, reconcile. So I need to deploy the controller to reconcile the APIs globally across the state. So let's just jump into compute prod. So and all those commands, they look very like a file system, right? Yep, you yep. So change the or something. I went into the cluster where my controller will be running. Let's spin up the. So you have a cluster now in KCP, right? So I is this a workspace? It like if to look for the Linux uh, terminology, I mounted a compute cluster in my workspaces as auxiliary compute. 
So compute became part of my ecosystem because I don't want to be jumping cube configs. It's the same experience for everybody. And looks like Lego talk just finished. So and I'm deploying the controller. So let's see ML. Controller is running. So the service team, ML team, who provides the APIs, they did the job, they compiled it. So now I'm a user. As a user, I care about only one thing at this point. I need to run my ML jobs, get results, and they need to run in US and Europe because of data rules and everything. So let's switch to user role now. So as a user, so same workspaces. Let's create a two workspaces. And if you notice, I, I have a two location selector. One is name root, another one named beta and type ML training. So I'm implying, hey, platform, give me a workspace place for me to work, which is ML enabled. So if I do now VS3, I see the two new appeared. And I have the CRD created, which I read from documentation, this is how you do these things. I need to change, train some chat application on Llama 2, some parameters, same CRD, and I need to train it in both locations because of different data, like uh, France accent, language-based chat, and USA English one. So I go into Europe's workspace, simple command, just get in, and I create a CRD. Dash o YAML. And I see it got accepted by location best Europe because I just instantiated in the workspace. I didn't provide it in anywhere else apart like give me this workspace in that. This means platform itself knew that the workspace needs to land in a Europe location and do the job there. So let's do the same now for USA. Just to show that it's not a serial demo. I creating a save model, same thing, and if I do, I can see it got accepted by US location. From Kubernetes standpoints, this feels looks like Kubernetes experience. All the CRDs are there, API is there. And one thing which I want to show last is the model CPI was provided to my workspace in a form of bindings. So this means the service team, when they created export, now you can bind one to many, and teams just interact with APIs, and they do the heavy lifting. And you don't see anything about the controllers, right? They're no, just invisible. It's a, it's a service team's responsibility to handle those things. And if we see now here, like model in US completed running, job done. So that's, that's how it could look like if somebody would be build, somebody would build ML platform as a service. Yeah, so very quickly, um, KCP is a sandbox project. We talked about that. It's based on Kubernetes source code. It's based on CRDs. So everything here is a Kubernetes-like API. Um, so all the tooling, controller runtime, QCuttle you saw in the, in the presentation, all the tooling just works. Argo CD just works. And, um, everything that the primitives we are building here, they're inherently multi-tenant, multi-region, multi-cloud. So it's more than just uh, what Kubernetes offers. So workspaces are in the center. Workspaces are our, um, yeah, basically the unit of the user experience uh, to, 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 work on, uh, to work in. Everything is in one, like you, you saw the switching around between the workspaces in the hierarchy. There's one endpoint uh, behind that. Of course, the endpoint can be HA, like in different regions or different uh, uh, cloud providers, but it's basically logically one endpoint. And it scales, like we saw two shards here. So the thing was running already in two shards, but you can have 100 shards in theory. And the API export and the API binding, this is, it's based on CRDs, but it's not CRDs. It's more than that, because we need different primitives uh, for API management. So we saw that already. Yeah. I mean, we are here also after the talk. Talk to us. We want to get your input. Um, we also have stickers with us. You can find us on the Kubernetes Slack, KCP minus dev. Um, of course, it's a sandbox project, so the code is open source. Um, go to GitHub, kcp minus dev slash kcp. Follow us on um, X, so 
uh, KACP or our dedicated handles. And if you have later questions, or come to our booth, Upbound booth, Kubernetes booth, or CAST AI booth. Uh, there you can find us. And what we need and what we want is your feedback. Feedback to the talk, how you like it, but also in general, what are your thoughts, what are you doing with platform, um, and where you would like to use this so that KCP and in general this whole idea can uh, evolve. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>